Hello guys and welcome back to another video. Today we are talking all about the Dorney Lake season finale triathlon which I took part in just yesterday. So let's go over what happened in this race. So yes, yesterday was my first time ever racing at Dorney Lake and for those of you who live in London and do triathlons, you'll probably know that quite a lot of triathlons go on at this place. It was the 2012 Olympic rowing venue and so it is almost perfect for triathlon being able to swim in the actual part where they were doing the rowing. And then it's got a private traffic free 5.2 kilometer bike course around and a 2.5K out and back run loop. This makes for an incredibly unique venue along with some great conditions. However, the only thing is when it gets windy there, the bike course is incredibly exposed. And that's something that definitely happened yesterday, which we'll get onto after talking about the swim section of the triathlon. Just as a quick interruption guys, if you are enjoying this video, please consider liking and subscribing. They really help out the channel and they mean a lot to me. Swimming at Dorney Lake was really, really nice. It's incredibly flat and it's very well marked course. I was doing the Olympic distance, which is 1.5 kilometers swim. And I'm really pleased with how I did on the swim. They were setting us off in a pulsed manner, which is a fashion nowadays even though we are still on our recovery from COVID-19. I ended up setting off about fifth or sixth and quickly made my way into the top two or three swimmers and managed to maintain that position pretty much through the whole swim. This definitely wasn't my best swim as I was having a little bit of shoulder tightness on my left hand side. However, I just did my best not to let that get to me as I know that at least personally, if I start feeling like I'm not doing very well, I'll end up doing worse and worse and worse if I let that mentality start to go downhill. I managed to make it out of the water in 25 minutes, which definitely is not my fastest swim. However, with the conditions on the day and how I was feeling coming to the end of my season, I'm still pleased with this result. At a super quick transition, that went really well and I was able to hop straight out onto the bike course, which was eight 5.2 kilometer loops making it just over 42 kilometers, so slightly longer than some of my other Olympic distance races this year. And on that bike course, one portion was out, then around the top of the rowing part, and then back down. So one way, the first way out was very much so into a headwind, and that really started to grind my gears after about the sixth or seventh time going into it. However, on the way back, it was an absolutely wicked tailwind, so um, my speed was about three or four kilometers per hour slower on the outs and faster on the backs. If my swim wasn't my best result ever, my bike definitely wasn't. Although it was a longer course, so it's not necessarily comparable to some of my other ones, I really wasn't feeling the bike course that day. I just couldn't get my legs to produce the power that I'm normally used to. I couldn't find myself in the right gear. I couldn't get comfortable. Just everything about the day just wasn't quite feeling right for me on the bike portion and that put me in a slightly bad mood coming off of the bike. And that wasn't helped at all by me getting a pretty significant chunk of my lovely flowing locks caught up in my bike helmet um, after I racked my bike in T2. I really went into quite a panic, couldn't figure out how to get my bike helmet off as trying to get my hair out of it. I managed to get it out without tearing a load of my hair out, which was my consideration at one point. However, that did mean that I didn't end up putting on my shoes very well. And that led to me developing quite a nasty blister on the right hand side. Now, I don't think that was the shoes fault. I was wearing my brand new Adidas Adi Zero Adios Pro 2, which you can see my first impressions video up in the corner just there. I think I was just too rushed and I didn't pull the laces tight enough on that right hand side because I didn't have any problems on the left and I haven't had any problems since then. Although I'm sure this slightly negatively affected my performance, I'm still really happy with my run result as I was able to match my time from the London Triathlon. I ended up coming in overall with two hours and 22 minutes and a handful of seconds for change. Now this is definitely an exceptional result However, comparing it to some of the other people in my age group, I know where I can improve and I really think that bike is somewhere where I'm gonna to have to put in a lot of work over the off season to get myself ready to compete and to push myself onto some very exciting new goals 
for 2022. Even if this wasn't the race that I had hoped for, I absolutely loved racing at Dorney Lake and I'd definitely go back there again. I think Human Race put on an absolutely brilliant show with a massive range of distances for all different types of ability levels. And that brings me on to a massive congratulations to my mum who did her first ever triathlon this weekend. I'm incredibly proud of you mum and I hope to see you back on the start line soon. I also want to give a massive shout out to Danny. She came along, held all the stuff, took all the photos and videos that you're seeing in this video and I really wouldn't have been able to do this race and push myself for my last race of the season without her. So again, thank you Danny so much. And that's it for this race recap of the season finale triathlon at Dorney Lake. I hope you all enjoyed. If you did, hit that like button. If you want to see similar videos, please consider hitting subscribe. And on screen now, I'll put up my London Triathlon 2021 race recap for you all to watch, which was my best race to date. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.